I went out and had some fun and I come back home to this trying to be sneaky but she is all kinds of hosting This makes me so happy. You have no idea. This is basically the entire point of me having saltwater tanks. Is that right there? Clownfish hosting an anemone. So I thought everything was fine with the NEM. I mean, it was so perfect last night. Clownfish was sleeping in it like it was a bed. He was so happy, well she, pardon me, Big Orange one's a girl, right? So she was so happy, and this is the state of it today. So I have murdered an, another anemone, and I did it inside of 12 hours. Pretty sure I can see straight through the middle there. It's a little more closed up now because... She's, she wants to host in it so bad, she keeps going over there and rubbing it. But that's the bad news. Good news is, I have pods in here still. Probably there's no way you can see them on here, but there are pods in here 24 hours later. That's a good sign. I can see pods in this aquarium, but really just the free swimming ones. And though I can't be sure whether they're, you know, from the algae barn starter kit or from the, um, from the other product I bought, they do in fact all seem to be the same species as the kind that I bought yesterday. So. But anyway, that's good news. As um, disappointing as losing another NEM is. Yeah, so I decided not to... I did go to aquarium stores again today. Decided not to film it. But I did get... This thing. And it's a bristle worm trap because I can't necessarily be sure that it was something in the, the water that killed the NEM because the water tests fine or it's something that I'm simply not testing for. But I definitely have so many bristle worms in there that I can't root, I can't exclude them from possibly being a cause not only of what happened to the NEM, but to keep what pods I have alive and thriving, we're probably gonna have to try and get some of these uh, bristle worms out of here. So I'm gonna try this trap out. So package opened, and here's what we got. So these pieces slide apart. Your bait goes in this end. This little cap goes on here. It was on there. I had to pry it out with the knife there. But there's a kind of hole through there. Hole through there. This little narrow trapping end. That they're going to go in. And then this whole thing, once assembled, with the cap in there, it's going to slide together like this. And so you can change the size of it. It could be that big. It could be that big. It could be that big. So it's a pretty slick little setup. It also comes with this bait here. Which I don't know. These look like dried two flex worms or something. But I'm also going to hit it with a couple other things. Uh, my NLS marine fish formula. And they have some fish eggs here. So load up the trap. Oop. Crumbled in my fingers. Put a couple pieces of that in there.
I don't want to put too much in because obviously you don't want uh, what you call it. You don't want too much decaying food in there. A couple small pellets. My bristle worms are pretty aggressive, so I have no doubt that they're going to immediately come for this. So if this trap works, I should have bristle worms in like an hour minimum. Cap that off. These two together, lids on. Let's drop this in the aquarium. All right, so beta trap going in. We'll just go ahead and drop it right there. And look who came out to play today. Oop, and Clown Goby poking his head out. So we got our trap set. Got this other GoPro here, and I'm going to set a time lapse on it, and hopefully we'll see it catch something. What's interesting here is everything else has smelled the food. I've only just put it in, and there's a hermit crab already on the tail of this thing. Bumblebee snail was already there. This Narcissus snail popped out, is making his way over. The other hermit crab smells it. He's on his way. You would think I don't feed this tank enough. Do a voiceover over all this. Um, hermit crab here. Just immediately drawing his tube, going crazy. And I thought it was kind of interesting. But yeah, he turns it around a bunch. And then we're looking back here at where they're coming in to the tube. You can see like the first victim sliding in there. Turbo snail munching on whatever. And the anemone is now instead of looking dead, kind of starting to open a little bit. And so we'll keep an eye on that. As it goes on, again, there's that worm starting to get, try and get into the bait again. Or at least into the tube. And we go out to this wide shot. If you look down at the bottom of the tank here, you'll see the biggest bristle worm. And then he touches that uh, snail and slinks back away. But, um, so we're going to zoom in again. So we're watching how many bristle worms are in there already there's already like four or five of them in there I think I cleaned this one out this was the one that we did five in and the anemone look at the anemone is like completely refilling almost looking totally normal again looks like it's walking back into that corner a little bit further but you can see the rock if you look at the top of the rock those worms are just everywhere and for some reason, I think the, the little clown goby is like messing with them <laughs> as they're going into this thing. But the hermit, the emerald crab comes out. He's eating the grasses like a good emerald crab should. And the night lights kick on, and you can see the the dust gets stirred up because the uh, the pump switches on for the other direction, and just stirs it up for a minute. But the NEM looks, you know, pretty much almost normal at this point. Seems to be moving further back in the corner still. Yeah, she just loves hosting that thing. And then this near right snail pops up out of nowhere. Starts cruising up the glass. He's just munching on the glass and then he just decides. Alright, right, right about here is a good spot. Maybe here. Yeah, I'm going to park here. There you have it. What we thought was dead is now perfectly fine. So I don't know. I think maybe my lights are 
still too bright because that was once a problem when I put this light on here, which turns out this is actually a really expensive light. So it's not some junky light as far as I thought. Uh, this trap is working gangbusters. And I'm considering, I think I'm gonna empty it out and rebate it and move it somewhere else because I got a bunch and it doesn't look like any more are going for it. All right, let's crack this sucker open and see what we caught. All right, set all that aside. Let's take a look at what we caught. Let me pour these out on something so we can get a better look at them. There's one bristle worm. That's a big old bristle worm. It's another big old bristle worm. So we got five of them that time. Let's see if we can beat that number leaving it overnight. Alright, traps rebaited. This time I baited it with um, a couple of the recommended included bait, the tubaflex worms, dehydrated or whatever they are. And then a favorite snack of theirs. And I may have small bobbit worms. And if I do, this is the only thing that attracts those. It's uh, blood worms, which are mosquito larvae. Plus, there's also like a, at least one mice shrimp in there. They come out of they come out of the same uh, frozen cube I get. So we're gonna take this back over the tank. So we're gonna work on getting the air bubbles out of it this time. It's pretty close to where I want it. Let me just adjust it with my tongs a little bit. He's gonna bite me. I know he's gonna bite me. Don't do it, buddy. Don't bite me. I'm saving your tank, don't bite me. Yeah, one of those two, and I'm pretty sure it's the little black one, has a vicious bite. I mean a vicious, he leaves marks. First potential victim right there. He's going for it. Really, just staring in the camera. There you go. So the Nim's still on the move. He's gone further back into that hole. I don't know if just this giant clownfish is annoying it or what's going on. But it doesn't look like it's dying, so. But I don't think the clownfish, if I can find the right flashlight, actually likes rubbing up against that ball anemone down there in the bottom of the hole. There's actually two of them, and when they swell up, they get really big. But anyway, besides that, I have caught one of the big ones. Look at the size of that one. And they're all over this thing. They absolutely love these blood worms. Yep, there's one in the bottom there. I think there's one in the bait already. Plus that ginormous one. And then there's another one, there's another one climbing on the back of it. So yeah, this is working really good. I knew they'd love the blood worms, so I've got more blood worms ready for tomorrow. And then I'll just feed mostly the mice and shrimp to the fish once I've decided I've caught enough. Alright, I'm afraid what I caught is going to escape, so we're just going to pull the trap right now. It's important we not touch these things. Supposedly they can sting you. Alright, let's see what we got this time. So the trap has been reset. 
And the little one there freaking bit me again. It's like twice in two days. Still keeping an eye on this Nim. May just not be a morning person because he's all deflated again. They may be able to escape out of this trap overnight. Got a couple in here, but not as many as I expected. We're gonna pull it out and rebait it again. Just keep catching these things till I stop seeing them. Okay, so in there is the granddaddy of them all. Fortunately, not gonna be able to see it, but he still runs all the way back to the rock still. And he's all the way into the food. So I'm gonna try and grab this tube up because I got a bunch in there already. And hopefully I can get him too. Well, he escaped, so... I mean, he immediately escaped. He was gone the second I touched the tube. That one's so big, he's gonna be difficult to trap, so... Rebate the trap, put it back in the same spot, and see if I can't get him. Then up here, since I have extra blood worms, what better doesn't love blood worms? I'm gonna try and set you up here. Give him some blood worms. Yeah, there's also mice and shrimp in there. That's what the lighter colored things are. Should be enough food for him today. We got Mr. Super Red Bristlenose Pocostomus right here in the glass and high. Don't see any of the others. I'm pretty sure I've seen them the last couple of days, so we know they're doing all right. Quick little update. I wasn't able to bait the trap at all today. Uh, I was just had to leave for work, so I didn't get it done. So the anemone seems like it's picked out a spot it likes. I uh, can't be real sure because I accidentally knocked the power button off on this thing last night and had to reprogram it. And the drawback to the power strip I have here is that if it loses power, it also loses all, all its settings. And those settings will not go back to normal until after a night cycle. So even if you say, I want it on at 6 o'clock, and at 7 o'clock, the light should be on, when you set this thing up, it won't do that until tomorrow at 6, then it'll turn it on. So this light's been off all day, it's just been running the blues, and again, the NEM seems to like the blues, and at the same time, that means that this is the only power head that's been running all day because this one will only run on the day cycle and then something else to show you here that's uh my urchin carrying around the corpse of the last urchin i had i just thought that was interesting Clown Gobi is really loving this tiny little cave. It is the perfect size for him, and it's awesome. But if he sees me, he'll pop out, because he thinks there's food coming. And if you can see it, the crab just looks so cool hanging out down in there with his giant arms. Alright, so that's going to do it for this episode. This tank's really coming along, and I got big hopes that it's going to keep doing so. So, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.